Hi there, my name's Gordon. I'm the author of the book The End Is Nigh Again, but this time we really mean it, which is a book about Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and that religion, that cult. Um, I mean, I'm here in my capacity as a therapist, and I'm going to talk about hypnosis. The reason for that is, as most of you know, uh, any ex-Jehovah's Witness, or any Jehovah's Witness for that matter, knows that um, hypnosis has had a bad rap from the the organization that runs the Jehovah's Witness uh, cult, which is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Um, they claim that hypnosis um, uh, allows you to be um, possessed by demons because of you losing control. Yeah. Um, so I mean, my initial response as a therapist and having done hypnosis with people and myself for many, many years, my response to that about, about the possibility of being demonized is um, kind of uh, <coughs> bollocks. Um, that's my non-professional opinion. However, my professional opinion is this. In all of the years that I've done hypnosis and all of the conversations I've had with people who've done hypnosis for a lot of years, a lot of years, I've never heard of one case of demonic possession during hypnosis. And I'll explain why. Um, but no, it doesn't happen. The demons do not seem to enter into your body when you're in trance. Because if the demons did enter into your body when you're in trance, everybody would be demonized. Why? Let me explain. You see, trance, hypnosis, is just a name given to a naturally occurring event. Okay, something that happens naturally in our everyday lives. Let me give you some examples. But first of all, trance, just so you understand, all trance is, is an altered state of awareness. Okay, something that's that takes you out of a normal state of awareness into an altered state. Now, we drop in and drop out of altered states of awareness all day. As you're listening to my voice now, and you're focused on me, rather than anything else. You are in an altered state of awareness. You, it could be said that you were in some form of trance. Okay. Have you ever watched the TV and been so enthralled in what was happening, or perhaps not even noticing what was happening, just interested in the colour and the movement and the sound? And somebody over to one side has spoken to you, and you haven't heard them. How many times has that happened? That's because you're in an altered state of awareness, so that your awareness is focused on something else. And you can't hear that person. That's trance. Have you ever been in a car, either as a driver or as a passenger, and you're driving down the road and, you know, the wheels are making contact with the road and in a very rhythmic way, and you're just sitting there and your mind wanders off and you're thinking about whatever or nothing. And then suddenly something jerks you out of your thoughts and you look down at the clock and you notice that 30 minutes have passed and you've covered miles and miles without even being aware and you ask yourself well who was driving well those moments those altered states of awareness are trance we naturally go into trance all the time in fact um you know those moments of daydreaming well Research shows that unless we have those moments of daydreaming where we wander off into trance, we would have mental problems. You, know, you need those moments of kind of shutdown, of, of something different. Okay, so trance is natural. Now, there are two kinds of hypnosis that I'm aware of. The first kind of hypnosis is the hypnosis that, that I use in my therapy which is called clinical hypnosis that's a hypnosis which is um, is used to help people to to allow people to to change old programming to become the person that they want to become and then there's another kind of hypnosis which is waking hypnosis and that's a hypnosis that occurs all the time people are constantly working to hypnotize us, to program us, when, whilst we're awake. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Now, if there, was, if there was going to be one kind of hypnosis that was dangerous, then 
which one would it be? Would it be the one in which, in a clinical situation, somebody says to you, I'm going to put you into hypnosis now, and whilst you're there, I'm going to offer you some positive suggestions, and I want you to focus on those. Or, is it the hypnosis that occurs when you don't even know it's happening? Obviously, the latter is the most dangerous. Now, I don't use, on purpose, waking hypnosis. But I know certain organisations that do. How does waking hypnosis happen? Or how does hypnosis happen? Hypnosis and trance. What it does, it quietens the mind down. You see, in our mind we have a thing called the critical factor. Now this critical factor is like, how could I describe it? The, the computer was designed around the mind, okay? So imagine our mind is a computer. Our critical factor is our firewall. It's the little thing that stops the shit from getting in. Stops the virus from getting in. When you go into trance, that critical factor is quietened down. It quietens down and it allows positive suggestions to come through. But that doesn't mean that you could go into trance and I could say to you, um, I'm starting up a new religious cult and all you have to do is give me all of your finances and then come and join me. Okay, because even though your critical factor is quietened down in trance, there still remains a guardian on the gate. And that guardian on the gate is, is you. It's that part of the screen that comes up. This program is about to be installed. Do you want it? Yes or no? Okay. And you have a choice of saying yes or no. So that's clinical hypnosis. That's what happens. Um, however, in waking hypnosis, you're not aware that these things are happening. The critical factor in waking hypnosis disappears and you don't really have a choice or do you well I suppose you do you're just not aware that you're making a choice now let me tell you somebody who is really good at waking hypnosis Hitler what do you need to use waking hypnosis well what you need is um, you need a position of authority okay like the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society if you look at their material constantly they are telling you they're telling you and telling you that they are the one and only authority, God's authority, God's spokesperson here on earth. Now that's a pretty hefty uh, um, CV, isn't it? Okay, so you need a position of authority. Then you need emotion. Okay? Now, Hitler used emotion. He would rev the people up and there'd be music and pomp and ceremony and and everybody's critical factor just went to hell and they believed everything he said he changed the whole mind of a nation now the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society does exactly the same they use emotion the emotion of a fabulous paradise but not just that they use negative emotion too of death destruction Armageddon and then the other thing that they use, which is very, very good for waking hypnosis, is repetition. And repetition. And repetition. Something else. That's some other aspect of our lives where we have um, waking hypnosis is the television. And adverts. What do adverts do? They catch you when you're in an altered state of awareness. Your critical factors down. They give you music and good feelings and smiles and beautiful people. And then they tell you what's, what you've got to do to make yourself happy. It's a program that they run. And through repetition and repetition, you find yourself buying things that you would never buy. Through repetition and repetition, we found ourselves knocking on doors, telling people that they were going to die. And we didn't even know what the hell had happened. And how we'd ended up there. Okay, so that's waking hypnosis. Clinical hypnosis, and I, I'm not going to talk about stage hypnosis because that's that's something very very different, and, and that's not what we're doing here. Um, clinical hypnosis is is actually designed for good. 
It's designed to help people, not to manipulate them, but it's designed to help people to get what they want. And it's tailored around the person's needs, not around what somebody wants from you, if that makes sense. So the next video, we're in the next video, I'm going to explain, um, I'm going to show you what trance is. And if you want to, you can go with me into a nice trance. Okay, so I'll see you soon.